On December 28, 1986, the Los Angeles Rams journeyed to the nation's capital to meet the Washington Redskins in the NFC wild card game. Well, the Rams, it's been a season of transition, sort of, anyway, because they have gone through an evolution during the course of the campaign. They played with three quarterbacks this season. They have played without their number one tackler of last year, Jim Collins, one of the inside linebackers. They have played without Henry Ellard for half of the season. So in spite of all of that, they won ten ball games, wind up in a wild card situation, and a chance to go to the Super Bowl. So all in all, and looking back over the campaign, it's been a good one, and they've been able to succeed while making changes with the club. Up. Lie around, play hard, don't do anything stupid, play your game. Like you guys have played all year. Let's kick your butt in. In the trenches, the Rams played Washington evenly, but on the scoreboard, the Rams fell behind. Any hopes of a second half rally would ride on the arm of rookie quarterback Jim Everett. Snap back to Everett, back to throw, looking, fires deep down the left side, and he has Kevin House at the 29. Hey, where are you? He's grabbing the outside backer! He just grabbed the outside backer! Back to throw, Everett. Scrambles out to the right side, running, fires for the end zone, and it is... The score gave L.A. a glimmer of hope, but in the end, the Rams were overtaken by the Redskins. They give to Dickerson, comes back into the middle through the 25, 30, 35, 40, up to the 50. They may not be able to catch him. He's to the 30, 25, 20, up from behind at the 15-yard line. Daryl Green caught Dickerson and prevented an 80-yard touchdown run. The season ended for the Los Angeles Rams, but there was still much to be proud of in 1986. A fourth straight playoff appearance, a feat shared by only one other NFL team. Scores of new records and personal achievements, and a roster of athletes in place for 1987 with as much talent as any Rams team in recent memory. Only three teams in football allowed fewer points or ranked higher than the Rams' defense. And only two other clubs took the ball away more often. No runner in the game could match the achievements of Eric Dickerson, the NFL's rushing champion for the third time in four years. And few rookies ever had a more auspicious debut or showed as much promise as quarterback Jim Everett. The Rams of 1986 overcame injuries and uncertainty and still made the playoffs. Now they appear more imposing than ever. The rest of the league is on full alert. This is a team that is armed and dangerous. Let's just play our game. Our game is a kicking game. Don't give them a chance unless they play for it. Sanaheim Stadium was adorned with many lovely faces and lovely voices as well. But fans would also be seeing and hearing about some new faces. The Rams lineup card was constantly being rewritten due to injuries, trades, and retirements. Yet the club ignored such upheaval and kept right on winning. Team President Georgia Frontieri realized changes were necessary to enable the Rams to move forward. She followed her hiring of John Robinson with the acquisition of several key players as she continued to steer the ship on a championship course. In 1986, results came quickly. The Rams chalked up three straight early season wins with contributions coming from players such as quarterback Steve Bartkowski and tight end Tony Hunter, number 87. When Hunter was lost to a mid-season injury, rookies Darren Long and Damone Johnson saw action in support of reliable veteran David Hill, number 81. 
Other receivers contributed in the early weeks as well, including running back Mike Gooman and wideout Michael Young, number 88. Opposing defensive backs gave a wide berth to the fastest ram, Ron Brown, number 89. Despite missing the last two games of the season, Brown still posted the most productive receiving totals of his career. While the passing game was adjusting to a new quarterback and multiple receivers, the defense was in mid-season form as the 49ers discovered in a week two showdown. stifle their division rivals regularly, even turning Niner scoring opportunities into Los Angeles touchdowns. Washington trying to hit one, the snap back, ball down, the kick is blocked, it is rolling around at about the 34-yard line, finally flipped up and taken by Leroy Irvin, and he may go all the way with it. Deadlock at 13 late in the game, Steve Bartkowski engineered a last-minute drive that set up a game-winning field goal by kicker Mike Lansford. This early season 16-13 victory was just one of the many games the Rams would win on grit and guts. And no Ram was tougher in the crunch than all-pro guard and team captain Dennis Hera. Come on, let's get it rolling now. Let's get it rolling. Come on, let's pull it together now. Let's pull it together here. Pull it together here. Go! I just wanted to nail him and, and I lunged and, and caught a bunch of air. I caught a bunch of air, but I hit that air as hard as I could hit it. <laughs> you almost got in there. Era was joined to the offensive line by fellow pro bowlers Doug Smith and Jackie Slater, veteran Zerv Pankey. Tony Slayton and Duval Love. And rookie guard Tom Newberry, number 66. Together they led the way for the NFC's third rank rushing offense. Runners such as Charles White, Tim Tyrell, and Barry Redden, number 30, took full advantage of the broad boulevard created by the Ram offensive line. But the man whose opponents most hated to see with the football was Eric Dickerson, an athlete whose talents are obvious to players like Chicago's Mike Singletary. You talk about a guy like, like Eric Dickerson, you're talking about a guy that's, I really think, comes along once in a lifetime. You know, the word we like to use is invincible. You know, I'd like to get him a cape and make him think he's Superman. Like the legendary heroes of the comic strips, Eric Dickerson burst out of a telephone booth to perform feats of daring do that simply could not be achieved by mortal men. Besides leading the league in rushing with the sixth best total in history, Eric also became the Rams' all-time leading ball carrier and scorer. It took him only four years to obliterate both team records. Hall of Fame runner O.J. Simpson admires both Eric's accomplishments and his superstar aura. You're intimidated going on the field with a guy like that. Because you know he can run by you, and if he has to, he can run over you. 
Dickerson's power and speed pushed defenders back on their heels, but opponents never relaxed, even when Eric did not run between the tackles. His receiving and throwing skills could be just as damaging. Gives to Dickerson, wants to throw a pass out of it, and he has David Hill in the end zone. Cut for the touchdown on the halfback option by Eric Dickerson. Those people that dominate games, um, uh, the Larry Birds or those people, I think they get a sense that they are invincible, that, that they're going to, they are going to be successful no matter what obstacles are in their way. And that feeling is fleeting some of the times, but I think when you can get a runner to the point where he believes that, you have something special. Giants coach Bill Parcells knows just how special Larry can be. Every time he gets the ball, it's life or death, and it is. And uh, that's the only way to play against them. Just that one time when you relax, where you think someone else has got him down, just when you pull off your pursuit, that's when he's going to beat you. I'm an expert when I get the ball in my hand because I know what I'm doing. And put me one-on-one -on -one against someone, and I think I'm at my best. David Hill on the right. The one back is Dickerson. They come up the middle. Dickerson breaks to the 40, 35, 30, 15. He's down to the 10. Five. Touchdown, and the Rams win it. And that puts him over 200 yards for the day. The 1986 Rams defense may not have had an abundance of household names, but their bruising style was all too familiar to opposing ball carriers. The essence of our defense is that it identifies uh, itself as a group. Uh, it has no, no big names, but it has a group of very intelligent, very strong-willed, very good athletes who know how to play together. Such an attitude began with a defensive front and team sack king Gary Jeter. There's no marshmallow approach, you know, with our defensive front. You know, we're coming, definitely coming at you. Kind of like uh, Mike Tyson. When he hits a guy and the guy's falling, hit him again. Then he's out. Doug Reed, Reggie Doss, Sean Miller, Greg Meisner, Alvin Wright, and Charles Desjardins with plenty of heat on quarterbacks. Forcing the football into the waiting arms of Ram linebackers such as Mike Wilcher. The strength of the defense is the fact that we all play so well together. You know, the fact that we'll, we'll blitz a lot and the coverage will be so tight that it'll allow the blitz time to get there. And, you know, so as a unit, the rush and the coverage and against the run, everybody supports each other very well. Wilcher was joined by Mel Owens, Kevin Green, Jim Laughlin, first time starter Mark Giroux and pro bowler Carl Eckert. It wasn't the flashiest linebacking unit in football, but it just may have been the most effective. One of this defense's greatest strengths was its ability to communicate with each other, to stop trouble before it started. And I blocked me, he blocked me for a minute, and then I threw him in, and I came underneath. You threw him in, and I threw him out on you. Threw him out, okay. Right, and then I came off, and the guard hit me out. And the ball came up inside. Hey, because when he comes on you, I take a couple steps. He threw it out. When I started back, he, then he'd come on me. Number 21, Nolan Cromwell, is the dean of Ram defensive backs, and both his words and his actions continue to speak loudly of his 10th pro season. The rest of the secondary followed Cromwell's example. Johnny Johnson, Tim Fox, and Mickey Sutton all helped contribute to the third highest interception total in the NFC. In his first starting season, number 22, Vince Newsom, made a resounding impact, leading the entire team in tackles. 
Cornerback Leroy Irvin made the Pro Bowl for the second straight year. We started calling ourselves the dark side, meaning that uh, teams won't run, pass, or throw into darkness. It was truly lights out when throwing near Jerry Gray. Gray, number 25, stepped into the starting lineup following the retirement of Gary Green. And all Gray did was intercept eight passes and earn a spot on the NFC Pro Bowl roster. Gray was an alumnus of the Rams special teams, which also made a share of key plays. Dale Hatcher, Cliff Thrift, Mike McDonald, Steve Busick, and Norwood Van, number 51, all made major contributions. But perhaps the special team's two biggest plays of 1986 occurred in a single game. A week nine matchup in Chicago with the world champion Bears. With memories of the 85 championship game defeat still fresh in their minds, the inspired Rams grabbed a third quarter lead on Leroy Irvin's fumble recovery return for a touchdown. Quarterback Steve Dills was good when he had to be, hitting Ron Brown on a 65-yard touchdown bomb. And then tied at 17 with only four seconds remaining, Mike Lansford launched a 50-yard field goal to win the game. In the most exciting victory of the season, L.A. handed the Bears their first defeat at Soldier Field since 1984. Just a few weeks later, the Rams achieved another milestone. Slot right formation for Lure to throw, fires up and out, and it's intercepted by Leroy Irvin at the 50, all the way to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown! A 50-yard return. He was playing possum back there, and oh, oh, right in and got it. The Rams demolished Dallas 29 to 10 before a nationwide television audience, clinching a playoff berth for the fourth straight year. Wide to the left side, it is Tony Hill, the long snap to Pelura, steps into the end zone, scrambles back into the end zone, ready to throw, going to be hit the end zone, and sacked by Gary Jeter for the safety along with Kevin Green. That's playing defense right there. you got to love that kind of work. Absolutely. time, John Robinson has already cast a giant shadow. In 1986, he became only the third head coach in league history to make the playoffs in each of his first four seasons. But for players like Jackie Slater, there is much more to this man than one loss records. I've been very impressed with the way he's come in and shaped and molded this football team and built it. We've gotten better each and every year because he spends time on every aspect of our game to make us a total football team. Just make a first down. Just get another. We've got to go back to a mixture of run and pass and just start playing. Huh? Robinson was particularly adept at handling L.A.'s quarterback situation. Along with the injured Hugh Millen, the Rams had four different quarterbacks on the roster, including young Jim Everett. According to assistant coach Dick Corey, Robinson had a specific plan in mind for the prize rookie. Coach Robinson had made a decision early on that he was not going to play him until he felt very comfortable that, that he knew the offense and was ready to play. I think, you know, the Orson Welles advertisement about we'll open no wine before it's time, I, th I think was, was, a, was a, you know, a reasonable analogy. On November 16th, Jim Everett finally made his professional debut against the defending AFC champion New England Patriots. Asked how long Everett would play, Robinson replied, either eight downs or the rest of this century. David Hill in motion off the right wing, back to the left, back to throw, looking. Myers for the end zone to the right side to Henry Ellard. Caught for the touchdown! In barely three quarters of action, Everett fired three touchdown passes, galvanized the team and sent a wave of electricity through the Anaheim Stadium crowd. Back to throw Everett with time again and fires up and out and it is caught for the touchdown by Henry Ellard. That's Everett at his best right there. 
And I think the fans in Anaheim Stadium were really excited now. Here they, they, they saw the Rams trade away quite a bit uh, for this kid. When I finally had a chance to get in there, I think they were excited and they wanted me to do well. A few weeks later, Everett went head to head with Miami's Dan Marino and more than held his own, earning the immediate respect of the opposition and a few enduring nicknames from teammate Dennis Hera. He's got a face that looks like about the, about the width of a piece of paper, you know, so uh, we nicknamed him Blade, and uh, he looks a lot like Eddie Haskell from Leave it to Beaver, and uh, he's very positive, very direct. He's telling us to give him an extra second. He thinks he can get the ball in there. He said, if I can, he said, hell with it, I'll run the ball. Everett takes the snap, back to throw, looks right, left, got to scramble, up the middle, he comes in for the touchdown! And now by the addition of new offensive coordinator Ernie Zampezi, the Rams' passing attack should be more explosive than ever. We would like to say now that we're breaking out in the passing game. You know, people have accused us of playing with a football that doesn't spiral at times, but that's, but that's all right. But uh, right now, with the infusion of Everett in our thing, we will expand that area. But in a, a physical approach to the game, being able to defend the run, being able to run the football, that's, that's the Ram style. And uh, uh, if we can improve the passing to give us more balance, I think we, we will have what, what I think is the, the winning style. The Rams already have the NFL's greatest back running behind one of football's finest lines. A hard-working and enthusiastic defense loaded with bright young stars. And now the Rams have their quarterback for today and tomorrow. I'm excited about not only this year, but the year after, and the year after, and the year after. I mean, it just continually, and now uh, it's really exciting. I'm just glad to be a part of it. The warning signs have been posted. These Rams are armed and dangerous.